We were just dozing off, and I guess he was breathing heavily, and I kind of mumbled, asking him if he wanted a hit of my asthma inhaler, which he heard as, want to eat my ass maybe later? We howled for hours down there when we realized it, and we still say it to each other. At the end of the day, I got word that Nini is suing us for racial discrimination. What a sad end to a relationship with someone I adored and put on a pedestal for years and years. Thursday, April 21st, 2022. Lawsuits, tag, you're it. That was the text I woke up to from Erica Jane. That made me chuckle, me and Erica. Ben got up at 7, and I felt like shit with allergies. Cynthia Bailey texted, also heard from Garcelle, and got some voice notes from Kim Zolciak bierman By the time I got home, the stomach bug I had on Tuesday returned in the most violent way. It turned into a really horrible day spent in bed. Was supposed to go to SJ's for chili, and sadly, had to cancel. Monday, October 3rd, 2022. Another reminder that there's no sick day off for daddies and talk show hosts. I woke up at 7 with Ben, playing with stickers while my stomach made violent noises. It sounded like someone was in there trying to get out. Well, in theory, that was the case, but the emodium finally seemed to kick in. By the time I got him to school two hours later, I was exhausted. Ellen Barkin is moving into the building soon, and I saw her new place today. It is outstanding. Then I ran into Sally Field, whom I helped with her garbage. I'm always paranoid Ben's been making noises she can hear because they share a wall. Danielle Staub emailed saying she'd love to connect. I didn't respond. A couple summers ago, she did an hour-long podcast in which she was meant to expose me and wound up trashing me all over the place, so that's that. Jen Shaw is pissed at me for implying she's fired. She ripped off the poor and elderly and is going to jail for who knows how long, but is upset to be considered fired? I'm trying to interview her at some point, so I'm just biting my tongue. I have gone from the glory of feeling like Elvis with screaming fans and bodyguards to feeling like the most hated man on earth on Twitter. I had a tremendous wave of discord coming at me all day for tweeting about anti-Semitism, for not doing anything about the Jersey hotel lobby fight, and for my double standard in how I treated Teresa versus Jen Shaw. Well, the crimes were inordinately different, and Teresa pled while Jen was convicted. Then tonight I got home after taping two shows, and Garcelle and I were texting as the Beverly Hills reunion aired, saying she was disappointed in how it went. I said I agreed. I felt like I shit the bed on several levels, and have thought of things I wish I'd said as I watched the cuts. Then I went on Twitter and saw how disappointed the fans were in me. I tossed and turned all night thinking about that. In going through papers, I discovered my high school algebra teacher, Bev Nance, died of Alzheimer's, an extra tragic end given her brain power. I just couldn't get algebra, and she knew I could get it, and made me come in a couple mornings at some ungodly early hour so she could jam it into my head, and she simplified it so much I got it all. A couple years ago, I read she was denied housing by an old folks home in St. Louis because she was married to a woman. I hope she found somewhere nicer to live. She deserved it. Aviva Drescher emailed out of the blue to tell me that based on the videos I've been posting of Ben, it seems like maybe he's not getting enough sleep. So there's that. The Beverly Hills ladies are activated about tomorrow. Beyond whatever drama is happening on the show, there's a world of stuff happening online that's causing all sorts of mess. Garcelle is especially stressed out. Diana is apparently really sick and won't be there, which is a shame because she has a lot to answer for. I don't understand her at all. I've never even met her in person. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Reunion Day, and I feel like I shit the bed. My Twitter feed has been full of rage from impassioned fans of the show who would like me to roast Kyle, Rinna, and Erica, and I knew, no matter how far I pushed them, it was never going to be enough for the Twitter crowd. So the idea that I was a failure was playing somewhere in the back of my head, and the sequence with Kathy Hilton and Kyle was so sad, layered, and deep that by the end of the day, it had me wondering what the point of all of it really was. Garcelle turned to me a couple times as Kathy and Kyle were at odds and said, why are we doing this? The bigger question was why Rinna had made a federal case about it on the show. By day's end, it seemed that Kathy and Kyle's relationship was irreparable. I hate when family become collateral damage of the housewives. And I had the same pit in my stomach at the end of the day as I did in early seasons with Kyle and Kim and several times in New Jersey. Also irreparable seemed to be Rinna's relationship to the show. All us producers ended the day wondering if there was a path forward for her. We wrapped a little before 10 p.m., and I went back to the hotel and got very little rest. Didn't even have my usual post-taping tequilas. My head was spinning, though. 
I thought of a lot of things I should have said. Got a text from Rinna after midnight saying she's leaving the show, and eight years was a good run. It sure was. She is smart to leave now. It absolutely feels right. I wish she could have gone out on a better note. Not sure this is the last of this discussion. Diana will be gone too, so she'll be the first housewife in the history of the show that I have never met in person. Now that is a statistic. I have a set of books that tell you what your kids are like at every age. I've been schlepping the threes book around all summer, but haven't read the cover beyond the three, much less cracked the book itself. The subtitle is Friend or Enemy. I laughed out loud after the three weeks I've had. I'm just seeing this. I felt heard reading that three and a half year olds are essentially demons who take a lot of shit out on their primary caregiver. The advice in the book, get a babysitter as much as possible. Don't leave the house with them. Ignore them when they won't eat. Had me looking to see when it was published. 1985. Hmm, does that stuff still apply? <laughs> they go on to say spanking is basically okay. Fascinating, but I'm going to keep my hands off Ben. We got drinks, wandered around the bar unsuccessfully looking for a spot to stand, took 10 more selfies, and wound up by a table in what I guess is a no-standing zone. A woman came to tell me we couldn't stand there. And after a day of being so kind to everyone who came up to me, I was not to her. I just reached my limit, faced with what seemed like an arbitrary rule when I just wanted to stand there and have a drink and enjoy the view. I kind of snarled at her, wanting to know why I couldn't stand there. And she kind of backed away from me. Two minutes later, security was there, telling me I was being kicked out of the bar for speaking disrespectfully to the hostess, who apparently was in the back in a puddle of tears. I had made someone cry after a day of going out of my way to be extra kind to everyone. The manager, not Chris, appeared, and when she saw it was me who was the nasty person she had come to confront, said, I am so disappointed in you, Andy Cohen. I would not expect this from you. I felt incredibly defeated and begged her and the security guard to let me apologize to the crying hostess before I left. She said she would check. I explained that I was at the end of my rope at the end of a long day, but affirmed that there was no excuse. Thankfully, I did get a chance to apologize to the hostess, who seemed to accept it and said my context about my headspace helped her understand where I was coming from. I felt terribly and said again that there was no excuse. I went up to my room feeling like I'd really blown it. I made someone cry. How do you get over that? Watch Saturday Night Fever until I fell asleep. I was so bored after that that I took a risky business-like thirst trap in my closet, shirt and jacket, but no pants, and asked John Hill and Bruce if I could post it. Both said no. Bruce further said, you have to ask yourself why you're posting it. The answer was that my legs look good and I wanted attention. I didn't post it, but it's in the printed book, and there's a pic right here in the audiobook, so you can see too. Sorry, John and Bruce. I've been seeing double while watching TV and driving at night, which the nurse claimed is quite common. The doctor saw me and, as he was looking at my eyes, bluntly asked if I was the only person in my family with crossed eyes or if everyone has crossed eyes. I said, is there a way you could mention me being cross-eyed a little more? I didn't hear it those two times. I actually said that I am the only one with a wandering eye. He then told the nurse to dilate my eyes, asking on his way out the door if it was my first visit with him. I turned to the nurse in shock, saying I've been going there for 20 years. She said, well, it's late in the day, so maybe he's tired. I said, it's 3.15. They called me back in to see him before my eyes had fully dilated, and he told the nurse to put more drops in my eyes. I said, are my eyes going to be double dilated now? They both said, no, in unison. I felt like I was on severance in that weird torture office. They gave me new glasses to wear at night, and the lady at the glasses place said she loved watching me, and I said she should tell the doctor to be nice to me. Buying the apartment was an underlying cause for stress the entire, quote, vacation. And I pooped no fewer than 20 times in the first four days alone. It's the cost renovating it for two years with jacked up pricing and then selling my current former dream apartment in whatever market that would be. And then the size of the apartment smaller than mine. If I was playing a game on Watch What Happens Live, it would be, how much can he take? I was a wreck. Thinking about leaving my current building where I've been just shy of 20 years, makes me want to cry. Also, this is the place my kids will grow up, full stop, and probably my last stop on my stay in Manhattan. All huge life decisions here. The thing that tipped it towards happening was when I visualized living in that beautiful apartment, and specifically using the outdoor space as much as I know I will.